So Oppo has just dropped its Reno 11 Pro. It's one of the two devices that make up the new Reno's 11 series. But is this the camera phone for you? I'm Jeevan. This is our full review of the Oppo Reno 11 Pro. So let's start off with the design of this phone. It is one of Oppo's slimmest smartphones to date. At its slimmest point, it's only about 7 millimeters thick. That is less than a centimeter. But I think what steals the show is actually this. It's pearl white finish. So one thing I like about this design, you don't see the fingerprint at all. So it is not fully matte, but it does have the same feeling as if you know what mother of pearl is. Yeah, it feels like that. And it has this etching and finish that makes it look glossy like a mother of pearl. Uh, there is a significant camera bump, but we'll get to that in a little bit when we talk about the camera. The other thing you'll realize is, unlike the Oppo Find N series, we don't see a notification slider anywhere on this phone. So we're back to Oppo's standard design language. You have an IR blaster with this smartphone. So you can actually use this to control your air conditioning, your TV, which is not Wi-Fi enabled, and you have USB-C for charging. It also comes with stereo speakers. But I think the highlight when it comes to this phone, if you're not looking for the camera, is actually the screen. It's one of the best screens on a phone of this price point. You have wide color gamuts, you have support for HDR10, which means that if you're watching shows that require that dynamic range, perhaps like that scene from Game of Thrones, you'll be actually able, you will be actually able, you will actually be able to see stuff on the phone. And also when it comes to gaming, it also means your games are more vibrant. Thanks to the 120 hz adaptive display on this phone, you're actually going to get a little bit of an edge unless you're up against a gaming phone. So you have 120 hz refresh rate, which means that when you swipe between your screens or if you're reading, it's perfectly good for your eyes and it's buttery smooth. It also has blue light protection, but at the same time, I personally don't really use blue light protection. But the curved display is also one of the reasons why it's a little bit more ergonomic in your hand. Aside from that, you actually have a MediaTek Dimensity 8200 inside here. And for me, that was enough to actually play games like Diablo Immortal, Torchlight, even Pokemon Go actually worked on this pretty well. The only downside that I had while playing Diablo Immortal was when the screen got a little bit crowded with enemies, there was a little bit of a stutter and a few hiccups here and there, but no crashes, thankfully. And thankfully, while that happened, it did not affect my gameplay too much. The other thing is multitasking is even easier with ColorOS 14. You have features where you're able to put documents into your sidebar now. Where last time we used to put quick toggles into our dock, you're able to put things like files, your most accessed app, app pairs, everything into this dock. It makes it even more useful than on other devices. On top of that, it's made for multitasking. You'll be able to do things like pop-up screens, split-screen multitasking without much issues, and it can handle a lot of app running in the background. Though I don't recommend it per se, it can do it if you need it to. That said, I think Oppo has done a pretty bang-up job with creating a phone that is pretty balanced when it comes to your performance. When it comes to battery life, it has been a task to actually get this battery down to below 10%. If I'm not gaming, I'll probably get about close to 15 hours with regular use, I think about seven emails to this phone. And with gaming, I was able to get about three and a half hours in one session. Now that's pretty respectable. It's up there with some of the gaming phones out there. So you're getting this battery life on a 4,600 milliamp hour battery. That's pretty impressive for me. 
The other thing that I like about this phone when it comes to performance is how durable it can be if you're not turning the screen on on a regular basis. Like days where I'm not that active on my phone, I'm not sending emails, I'm not taking pictures. I can go through this battery in about two and a half to three days easily. Like seriously, this battery takes a while to deplete it. Even when we wanted to film stuff, we actually had to put it on with videos and even play games to bring the battery down enough so that we had that footage that we're going to show you of it charging. So this phone also supports Superbook charging at 100 watts. You're going to get a Superbook charger out of the box. No need to buy a new one on your own. And you can basically go from 0 to 100% in 28 minutes. So if you ever need a quick top up, you're not going to need long to get to a percentage where you can actually go out. The Reno lineup has always been about cameras and Oppo is not holding back when it comes to cameras on this phone this year. As you can see, they kind of are building on the design of last year's camera hump on the Reno 10. but. What I like about this is all the cameras are nearly in a straight line. So if you're in front of the camera, you don't really have to worry about which lens you need to look at. They're basically all in the same space. Of course, when it comes to taking pictures, the Reno is all about portrait photography. So Oppo has made improvements when it comes to the software what they have done is they've improved a lot of the post processing when it comes to taking these portrait shots and what you realize as a result of it is that you're able to get that smooth buttery bokeh that everybody is looking for the 11 pro in particular is able to separate your subject from the background really really well even in video so the main sensor on this camera is a 50 megapixel sony imx 890 it's a pretty good sensor which we've seen in multiple cameras before this the difference with this though is that oppo has actually optimized it really well with software i mean some of the shots that i took on this phone are actually better than some of the flagships out there the other thing that this has that a lot of flagships don't have is all pixel omnidirectional autofocus so this allows the phone to focus really really fast and it also has optical image stabilization now the main sensor is complemented by two other sensors one is a 32 megapixel sensor and the other is an ultra wide sensor while it doesn't have a periscope sensor I don't think you're missing out on much when it comes to this phone. What I do like about this phone's setup is the versatility to take a lot of different types of pictures when it comes down to it. Even zooming in, yes, you lose a lot of detail, but Oppo has created an algorithm in this that allows you to sharpen zoomed in images. You can go up to 20x zoom on this, and I'm pretty sure that not many of us will be using 20x that often but it does give you a lot of space to take perfect portrait photography now oppo touts this phone as a studio in your pocket now while you can't really fully edit video or pictures in the phone itself it's robust enough that you can download apps like adobe lightroom or even photoshop if you need to and to be very honest, I don't see the need to edit most of the pictures that I take. The other thing that I like is that this particular phone is able to take pretty high resolution videos. And this is the footage from the front camera as well. And as you can see, it's pretty good. It's also at 4K 30 frames per second. And you can also do bokeh if you want to. As you can see, the footage from this camera is actually pretty good. It's on par with some of the best camera phones we have out there and you're not paying out of the wazoo for this especially since it's coming with 512 gigs of internal storage which means that you can actually take a lot of video before you actually have to offload your footage. Overall, when it comes to balancing the, your essentials, your gaming, screen quality, viewing videos, I think 
this is potentially one of Oppo's best Reno so far. The only downside I can think of is you may find the audio a little bit sharp, but I'm pretty sure all of us have earphones or headphones or earbuds that we prefer to use them, especially when we're in public, which is where I see us using this the most. If you're in the market for a smartphone or maybe something that can bridge between a camera and a smartphone, Oppo has a pretty compelling solution for you. This has been our review for the Reno 11 Pro and stay tuned for the next one.